Hello? Yes, this is Upper Walsham 3. Catherwell Manor House. Dinner's ready, Mr. Parsons. Yes? Oh, yes, Miss Prudence. Did you want to speak to the General? Very good, Miss Prudence. You must please be more careful with the blackout curtains, Mary. This prudence will be a little late. 6.15 this evening in the forest of Compiègne, an armistice was signed between France and Germany. The resistance of France has ended. Her surrender is absolute, her fall complete. In Berlin tonight, a government spokesman declared that the conquest of Britain by the end of September is now definitely assured. He pointed out that the channel between Dover and Calais is a mere seven minutes flying distance. That's one good thing about the wireless. You can always turn it off. You share it, Mr. Dexter? Thank you. It's also unreal and terrible. Is that announcer fellow that annoys me? He talks as if he had a mouthful of golf balls. It's wonderful that he can be so cheerful when he has to tell us such awful things. Dinner is served, sir. Oh, thank you, Parsons. Thank you. Miss Prudence telephoned, sir. She said she'd be a little late. Oh. Is Dr. Roger in yet? Uh, not yet, sir. I'll give you another five minutes. Why, Roger, you certainly keep late hours nowadays. Oh, hello, Wilfred. <coughs> Good evening, everybody. I'm sorry, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Oh, that's all right, Roger. Well, how do you do, Vicar? How do you do, Mrs. Malcolm? Your hospital must be getting some pretty bad cases. Yeah, they're sending the worst straight down to the West Country. Most of ours are shock exposures. When men haven't slept for days on end, you have to teach them how to close their eyes. You heard the news this evening? Yes. Well, thank you, Parsons. Well, we know now where we stand, don't we? Napoleon conquered the whole of Europe. He never touched England. Napoleon didn't have 15,000 bombers. There's no need for us to get excited. Don't you think perhaps it's time we did get excited? Oh, why, Roger, please. Do you know what our enemies say every night in their prayers? They say, please, God, keep the English from getting excited for one more year. And we shall never need your help again. Oh, for goodness sake, let's talk about something cheerful. Oh, come on now. We've never had jitters in this old house, and we're not going to start this evening. Roger's right. We know where we stand now. And thank heaven for that. Now, let's go in before the soup gets cold. He's really looking remarkably well. I mean, you think of all the hard work he's been doing. Yes. You have coffee in here, sir, in the library? In the library, Parsons. Four dollars? Oh, no, thank you. Parsons. Oh, yes, sir. Did Miss Prudence tell you what to do later? Uh, no, sir. You're her father, Roger. It's no concern of mine, but if you want my opinion, Prudence is not behaving in a manner befitting her position. Yesterday afternoon, she took Bert Higgins, the gardener, for a drive in her car instead of attending Lord Evesham's charity party. Uh, Bert Higgins is convalescing. I took out his appendix last month. Well, that doesn't confer special privileges. I remember taking out Lord Evesham's appendix a year ago. Do you know it was exactly like Bert's? Yes, that's a ridiculous argument. We don't shake hands with each other's appendixes. Or is it appendices? I'm not against equality. I'm perfectly prepared to be equal with anybody. Providing they don't start being equal with me. Grandfather, I'm terribly sorry. I know I'm awfully late. That's all right, Prue. Good evening, everybody. Do you mind if I don't change? Of course not. We thought you'd been captured by one of those German parachute fellows. <laughs> Bring Miss Prudence at dinner, Parsons. Well, what have you been up to? Oh, I got the late in Gosley. I had so many things to do. Things to do in Gosley? Yes, I had my hair done and... You mean you drove 15 miles in wartime to have your hair done? Oh, I had a lot of other things to do at the same time. I, I did some shopping and uh, I had my hair done and uh, then I joined the WERFs. You joined... The what? The WEFs, the Women's Auxiliary Air Force. We hadn't even heard you'd applied for a commission. Oh, I didn't apply for a commission. I joined the ranks. My dear Prudence, why on earth didn't you tell me? I could have arranged for you to be an officer. But I don't want to be an officer till I've learned to be a private. Are you aware that Annie Smith, who scrubs the schoolhouse floors, joined the WEFs as a private? Yes, I told her she ought to. For generations, the Cathaways have been leaders, Prudence, not followers. In joining this woman's army, you are throwing aside certain, shall I say, traditions that have always entitled the Cathaways to lead. Quite possibly she was thinking of something else. What exactly are you suggesting, Aunt Iris? I'm suggesting nothing, my dear. I'm merely facing the fact that some of you girls of today would do almost anything in the world to be different. You think it clever to be different, even at the expense of your own family. When you and Uncle Wilfred talk, I seem to hear words oozing from the holes of a moth-eaten sofa. Prudence, remember where you are. I do remember where I am. I'm in 1940 and you're in 1880. You and people like you are a worse danger to us than Hitler is. Yes, I mean it. 
One day we may look back and thank Hitler for some of the things he's done to wake us up, but we'll never look back and thank you. You believe that 40 million people exist in England to make you comfortable. You hate this war because you, you knock your shins in a blackout. You grumble about it because it deprives you of your favorite German bath salts. And what's more, you fear it because the common men who are doing the fighting may suddenly begin to doubt the importance of risking their lives to keep the Uncle Wilfreds and the Aunt Irises in a mortal part of England. Give me a glass of sherry, will you, Parsons? Yes, Miss Prudence. Mm. Shall we go into the library? Yes. Are you joining us, Father? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Shall we? Coming, Roger. Certainly. We had some excellent chocolate meringues tonight. I shouldn't miss them if I were you. I'm afraid I was rather rude, Parsons. On the contrary, Miss Prudence. If I may say so, it had flavor. Janet Beaton. Here. Alice Morgan. Here. Rena Smith. Present. Jane Lindsay. Here. Rose Johnson. Here. Prudence Cathaway. Here. Violet Worthing. Present. Jean Mackenzie. Red tape, that's what it is. Who can see we're here without calling out all them names? Alice Ball. Here. Are you live in Gosley? Yes. No, I live across the Downs, near Walsh. I'm local. Do you know any boys around here? No, oh, I, I don't. You leave that to me. I'll fix you up. All right, come through here. Bring your bags. Name? Uh, Ellsworth. Size? 14. 14. 14. Name? Janet Walker. Size? 12. 12. 12. How's that? You look like a colonel. Wish I looked as well. You, if I'm a colonel, you're a full-blown field marshal. Got a lipstick? Yes, I think so. Here you are. Thanks. Think we're going to like it here? Oh, I'm sure we are. What's your hat number? 27. Fine, that's mine too. How about trying for a nice corn together, eh? What's your name? Me? Violet. Violet Worthing, Mum. Take off that lipstick. You're in the army now and makeup doesn't go with uniforms. I'm sorry, I'm sure. I didn't know. Do you mind? Oh, no, not at all. That's me and Joe. Oh, isn't he good looking? Joe's all right. He's going to propose to me. Good for you. You married? No. Promised? No, not yet. Well, look, Joe's picking me up at 8 o'clock tonight. I'll give him a ring and get him to bring along a boy for you. Well, uh, maybe some other night. Joining up's enough to start with. You ain't a blue stocking. Oh, I should hope not. All recruits fall in at once on the parade ground. Number one marker, fall in. Number one squad, fall in. Swing those arms. Hut, two, three, four, lift. One, two, one, two, one, two, and stop. Gas mask bill by numbers. One. Two. Three. Send to those eyepieces. Pads well up. Tax loose tabs. S. Steady. Steady. Heads well up. Lead slowly. For me, it's ever so important. I thought he'd propose the other night. Oh, well, I didn't want to tell you before, but eight weeks I've been walking out with him, wet and fine. 
I've never got him so close as I did the other night, Prue. He was putting bits of grass down me neck like he always does when he's on the point or something. He just started to ask me when the air raids are and went, Oh, I could have killed those blasted Germans up there. Well, you've still got tonight, Violet. Ain't a hope unless we do something. Look, he calls up this morning to say he's bringing a chum with him. Whatever for? Oh, because he's Joe, that's why. He loves me right enough, Prue, but he's just scared stiff of marrying. So he brings along a chum to walk between us. So he can go away tomorrow and join the Navy. And enjoy it all by himself. Come on, Bye. <laughs> Prue, would you do something for me? Anything. Come out with me tonight. Come out and take Joe's chum away, will you? But Vi, I don't even know. Violet oh, Worthy. Oh, there you are. You're on duty in the mess hut. They've been looking for you everywhere. Hurry. Coming. Eight o'clock tonight, then. You won't let me down, Prue. Oh, no, you won't. Joyce Wynn? All right. Alice Morgan? Yes. Prudence Cathaway? All right. Violet Worthy? Yes. Janet Beeson? All right. Where are they? They must be up here somewhere. Is that you, Violet? Oh, there they are. Joe, is that you? Yeah, Maria. This is my chum, Prue Cathaway. She thought she'd like a walk and... Well, uh... that's fine. Three's an odd number and four's a nice party for the pictures. This is my chum, Clive Briggs. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Good Briggs. Evening. Well? Well, let's go. Who wants the pictures? Do you, Prue? Well, I'd... I think I'd rather be outdoors at a night like this. I know. Let's all go for a stroll downtown and have a nice beer and bloat with the fighting cops. Oh, come on, Joe. This ain't a cook's tour. All trooping around in a bunch. Mr. Briggs and Prue don't want us hanging around any more than we want them. See you back here at ten o'clock. Be good, you two. There's a concert at the camp tonight. Would you like to go? If you want to, I, I really don't care. Well, perhaps you'd rather walk. It really doesn't matter. Is this what you usually do when you come out like this? I don't usually come out like this. Oh, I beg your pardon. You're a very superior sort of wife, aren't you? I'm not in the least superior. If you really want to know, I came out to help a friend. Or didn't you realize that Joe and Violet happened to be in love? No, I didn't. And to be honest with you, I'm not the least interested in Joe or Violet. Look. They're bombing Dover. Or is it Canterbury? No, it's farther north. Over the Thames estuary. I think they're going right through to London. They'll be bombing our camp one of these days. <laughs> don't worry, they're not going to waste bombs on a WAF camp. Why not? My dear girl, don't you realize that a big bomb costs a thousand pounds? We could go around the world on the price of one bomb. We need one each to do it well. Seems a waste, doesn't it? Paying goes another trip around the world. Cigarette? Oh, thank you. What's the English aristocracy doing in the ranks of the WAFs? I don't know what you mean. I seem to recognize the proud voice that lords it over the patient British people. Are you one of the aristocracy haters? I neither hate them nor admire them. I ignore them. Oh, that must be terrible for them. Even if I did belong to what you call the aristocracy, have you any objection to my being in the ranks of the WAFs? I have no objection. I only thought that the ranks might. Oh, they're quite broad-minded, you know. In fact, they're a very nice sort of girl. Oh, they're all right, I expect. Just putting them in uniform doesn't turn them into Joan of Arcs, you know. You don't believe in girls in uniform. You don't believe in very much, do you? I believe in people who know what they're doing and where they're going. You're bitter about something, aren't you? Well, the show seems to be over. We'd better be moving on. Moving on? Sounds like a gypsy. Or a vagabond. Come on, let's go. Well, here we are. Oh, sorry, I didn't get your name. Prudence. Prudence Cathaway. Prudence. Oh, good night, Miss Cathaway. That's you, Clive. Oh, here we are, Joe. Hi there, Prue. Yes. Well, good night, old girl. All right, regular. Take care of yourself, Joe. Thanks awfully, Alec. I did have a lovely time. See you Sunday for dinner, Ted. Mother's expecting you. Good night, Tom. It seems that everyone... Goodbye. Uh, shall I see you again? Oh, I don't know. How about Saturday in the afternoon? Well, I can't promise. I may be busy. I'll wait for you down at the river. I suppose I, I can't get away. If you can't, it won't make any difference. <laughs> at least you tell the truth. 
Good night. Good night. You're a fine one leaving a chap in the lurch. Had the girl had a nerve busting in like that. What was she like? Webb? Present. Cathaway? Present. Worthing? Present. Stone? Here. Walker? Here. Banning? Present. Sherman? Here. All right, thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'll never be able to thank you for what you did tonight. Don't be silly, Vi. It worked out fine. I didn't even have to ask him. Came quite natural. I'm glad he looked awfully nice. I knew you'd like him. Oh, what was that chum of Joe's like? Oh, he was all right. I couldn't see him in the dark, but he smelled clean. <laughs> Good night, Prue. Good night, Prue. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. I had an awful time getting away. Oh, all right. I'm glad you came. Have you been waiting long? No, I uh, just arrived myself. So you're the girl I met in the dark? Yes, here I am. Should we go for a walk? All right. Single-handed. I say, miss, table for two. Table for two? <laughs> he has a whole pea house. Table for two. Miss, two poached eggs, please. Poached eggs. Every time I pass that chunk's table, he shouts poached eggs. Just a minute, I'll be there in a second. Uh, waitress. Just a second. Waitress, Amy. Well, what do you want? Waitress, do you remember me? Yes, what is it? Well, it was a long, long time ago. Here, where's my jam tart? You've had your jam tart. Didn't you see me give it a tart, miss? You took it away to take the fly off, and you ain't brought it back. Oh, that tart. Rosie, yes. where's that jam tart I gave you? Coming up. Please, One of them can't take a fly off a tart. Yes, what is it? Well, we've already given our order, but... Well, why didn't you say so, tiresome people? What is it you wanted? Jam tart. Waitress, wait. Yes, yes, don't get excited. I'll be with you in a minute. Here, Mrs. O'Hanlon. There you are. There's your jam tart. Thank you. What's the matter? Where are you going? We'll come back another time. Well, thanks, just the same. Well, what do you think of that? They take the table and keep it for half an hour, then they just walk out. Here you are, too. Oh, Clive, Banbury cakes. Do you mind if I have some? Not at all. Go ahead. May I have four, please? Ever since I was a child, I could never pass a Banbury cake in cold blood. <laughs> no, never mind. I'll get it. How much is it? One shilling, please. There we are. Thank you. Right. Thank you. What's that? Just lightning. Well, what are the boys and girls doing under these conditions? Depends on who they are and how they feel. Some get into hollow trees, others get into a cinema or a tea shop. Well, we've been to a tea shop. I expect all the hollow trees are full by now. That only leaves us the cinema. Do you think we can eat Banbury cakes in the cinema? <laughs> we can try. Come on. Six thirty. Well, that settles that. What happens now? Can we go back to the tea shop? No, please. I've got a big drawing from suffocated. I'd better get back to the camp. Oh, well, it's not six yet. It's half a mile to the bus. We can't very well swim over. Suppose we ought to wait here. Look, Albion Temperance and Commercial Hotel. Come on. <laughs> Good afternoon. We'd like a room, please. Hello. Well, what do you want? We'd like a room where we can have a fire lit and dry these things and have some tea set up. Hey? We don't have no room. But the girl just said... I don't care what you said. I say we don't have no room. This ain't the sort of place you want. Oh, I have my reputation to keep up. Reputation? I'd say you have, you dirty little pipsqueak. What you need is to open the windows and let the smell out. Then open your mind and let the smell out of that. Get a little police station, Emily. I'll show you this till order and decency in this country, war or no war. Five, let's go. Emily, go down to your mother. I'll call up myself. Hello. You're very nice. I think you can go where you want and do where you want. Coming into a respectable place. Here, give, give me the... First, please. All first, please. Oh, Gosley Camp, please, too. We don't pass Gosley Camp, sir. You want number 17. What? 
Says we want a number 17. Where do we get a number 17? At the crossroads, miss. You get one, takes you right past the camp gate. Thanks. Next one goes by at 720. Which way do we go? The faintest idea. Look, we can watch for the bus to keep dry at the same time. Come on. Well, this has been a great day. Crowded out of a tea shop, shut out of a cinema, thrown out of a hotel, and turned out of a bus. One feels the warm heart of England. You're shivering. No, I'm all right. I'm a fan of cake. No, thanks. I think I'd prefer something that blends a little more neatly with the weather. What's that? Whiskey. Have some? Help the Banbury's down. Never touch it. Go on, do you good. Oh, always take the cork out of a bottle before you hand it to a lady. Especially when it's a lady in a haystack. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. How's that? Good. <laughs> Did you ever get Stinko? Blind, unconscious Stinko? Yeah, have you? Mm-hmm. Two nights ago. Blind, blotto, out. Why? Why not? Well, people generally have good reasons for getting blind, blotto, out, don't they? Yes, I suppose so. Tell me, what's it like living in a WAP camp? <laughs> It's like a clock winding up. Hour after hour, the spring getting tighter and tighter until you feel if you, you see any more women or hear any more women, you're going to burst out screaming. You've just got to talk to a man sometimes. Any man. Anything with a pair of trousers on. Well, I'm anything with a pair of trousers on. <laughs> I didn't mean that. You know, the other night, when I met you, I couldn't see anything, but I knew exactly what you looked like in the daylight. What do I look like? <laughs> oh, you're rather good looking, really. Nice sort of face. Nose a little on the fine side. Mouth a little too big. One of your ears sticks out a little more than the other. But you know your face is slightly lopsided. Now, wait just a minute. But your eyes are good. Nice, deep brown. A little tired looking. They know as happen. You're better than a smack in the lug yourself. What's a smack in the lug? Hmm. An old friend of mine named Monty. If he says you're better than a smack in the lug, it means you're all right. Let's stop that. Not starting anything. I just said that you were all right. That's a perfectly decent, respectable thing to say. And hey, you're still cold. You better have a little more. Ooh. I want to ask you, why aren't you in uniform? Come on, just a little one. Well, will you, will you tell me when I get stinker, blind stinker? I'd be delighted, madam. Don't feel anything yet. You will, don't worry. No, really, I feel quite clear. This makes me want to talk, that's all. You know, I may not look it, but I'm tough. I can take it. Do you know, last Christmas I had three glasses of port and I want a ping pong match. No, I didn't tell the truth just then. I, I do feel stinko. Quite stink out of it. Don't look at me like that. Kiss me. be here in five minutes. You can put your kit bags over by the gate and stand nearby. Attention! Dismiss! Prue! Prue! Somebody's asking for you over by the stile. For me? Yes, go on. I'll look after your bag. Thanks. Hello. Hello. I hear you're leaving today. Yes, we're going to box crew. You look so beautiful. I haven't changed. You're so honest, so real. Well, here's the bus. I must go. Uh, how long will you be away? Three weeks. Three weeks? Is that such a long time? No, it's just... You'll be gone. No, I'll be here, Prue. I promise I will. You know, Clive, when I get back, I'll be due for leave. You will? Let's go away, then. I know a good hotel on the seacoast of Leaford. Oh, I'm afraid I can't. I have to go home. I promise to. Clive, come home with me. Me? To the ancestral home of the Cathaways? It's not so far from here to Walsham. We'll take the Tunbridge train. Pride of the family bringing home the man she found in the dark. You're not funny. I've never been more serious. Prue! Prue, quick! I must go. Goodbye. Goodbye, Prue. And remember, you're coming with me to Leaford. I'll drop you a card when I get back with the time of the train to Tunbridge. You mean Leaford? Tunbridge, goodbye! Oh, could you 
tell me what platform does the train from Tunbridge leave from? Number three, sir. Four twenty-seven. Five minutes time. Thank you. Would you keep an eye on my bag? Please? Certainly, sir. Could you tell me where the leaflet train goes from? Uh, number five, Miss, over the bridge. You better hurry, Miss. We'll be leaving in five minutes. Take a seat, please. Tumbridge train. What's the matching of water? Tumbridge train. Here's an empty one. Come along now. Take your seat for Tumbridge. Take your seat, please. I've been looking for you. Where are you going? Well, I was going to Tunbridge. You mean Leaford. We better hurry up to the other one, too. Well, I suppose some people would call this fate. Think of them at home. My first leave, there they are, running up the flags, rolling out the red carpet. And here am I, going in the opposite direction with a tall, dark stranger. You've made that stranger very happy, though, and very proud. That's a comfort. I'm not joking. I'm sorry. I've never seen you with your cap off before. Honey, Tom. What? I beg pardon? Oh, that's all right. Come in. Sorry, sir, but I have to punch the tickets. Come on, mate. There we are. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're on the wrong train, miss. Right train, wrong ticket. Well, there was a mistake. How far are you going? How far are we going? Leaford. Pay the difference at the junction. Now, just a moment. Could we be alone in here? Hi. I say, could we be alone in here? Well, uh, it's against the rules, but, uh, well, I was in the last war myself. Thank you. Miss, you still have to pay the difference. <laughs> <laughs> there are still some human beings left in the world. He's quite a character, isn't he? You know, it's hot in here. Would you do me a favor? Anything you ask, sir. Could you change into something less official? That is, if you have anything else in that bag. Yes, if you want me to. But what's wrong with the uniform? Well, isn't it rather warlike for a holiday? Can't we forget the war and everything about the war for six days? Seven days, really. Six nights and seven days. All Sunday, all Monday, all Tuesday. Mm -mm. Now you can look out of the window. The country's beautiful, isn't it? Ah, uh, superb. We're just passing a watercress farm. Did you know you can grow mustard and cress on old bits of flannel? One of our gardeners used to do it. One of your gardeners? How many gardeners precisely do you have? We had five. Five? And I suppose when you were a child, you had six nurses and ten rocking horses. What on earth do you want five gardeners for? We didn't want them. Our garden did. Fine. Well, I suppose that's one of the privileges of the idle rich. You talk like one of those Hyde Park tub thumpers who goes in for class hatred. If a man owns a chain of tea shops and employs a hundred girls, oh, that's fine, that's enterprise. But if he owns a country place and employs five gardeners to grow food, oh, that's the aristocracy grinding the faces of the poor. We're always reading about this blessed land, this England. But who do you suppose keeps this blessed land in decent condition if it isn't the poor tax bled landowners? Oh, you're yeah, the voice of England. The good old England that loves its horses and its cows and sheep because... because they never ask for a raise in pay. I'm not going to argue with you. Mm. Here, hold this a minute, will you? You talk about the idle rich. My goodness, you just try being rich and idle at the same time with taxes to the sky. I wish I had some better things. I left them all behind to be Spartan and business-like till the war's over. You should feel honored, sir. I'm wearing one of my last pairs of silk stockings for you. Sorry I'm taking such a long time. I suppose you're getting tired of looking at all those cows and sheep that never asked for a raise in pay. All right, you needn't buy the countryside any longer. Throw me that book, will you? Thank you. Well? stranger. I met a wife in the dark. 
I haven't a gardener to my name. Why do you punish yourself, Clive? You worry about how big is our house, how much land we've got. And when I tell you, you look as though a fireproof curtain had come down between us. What does it matter? Nothing matters. We're on a holiday for six long, wonderful days. And you're very beautiful. Oh, that's better. Just a moment ago, I was only pretty. Now I'm beautiful. <laughs> Getting on very nicely, aren't we? I just want to say that I haven't been so heavy for a long time. Come on. Hold that taxi. Party for the station. Good afternoon. I have a reservation. Mr. Clive Briggs. He's just a moment. Briggs. Briggs. We've reserved a nice double room on the first floor, sir. Oh, we prefer two rooms. Do you have two nice rooms? The best, sir. 214 and 216, both facing the sea, sir. Okay, will that be all right? That'll be fine. Will you please sign the registers? Order. 214, 216, second floor. Yes. Shall I open the bag, madam? Uh, no, thank you. Just leave it there. Sea yes. air, sunshine if you're lucky. <laughs> Clear view of the Germans in Calais on a fine day. What more can man desire? In time? Nothing. Look here. If you've suddenly changed your mind, why don't you say so? You're free to do whatever you like. You wanted me to come here? Well, here I am. So please stop asking me what I want to do. What's happened? You were happy enough on the train? I know. I... I just didn't realize. I'm sorry. Full up just now, are you? No, sir. We kept up very well this season until the Germans took Calais. If you'll excuse me, sir, I'll turn on the news. The loudspeaker's in the lounge, but you can hear perfectly at this table. Shall we have a walk, get some fresh air? But don't you want to listen to the news? Can't we forget that for one night? This is the Home and Forces program, Bruce Layton speaking. Here is the nine o'clock news. London. The Air Ministry announces that at 6.30 this evening, a large formation of enemy aircraft was sighted over the Thames estuary. Our fighters immediately engaged. I used to know a little place at the back of the town. It would be more friendly than the hotel if you'd care to walk over. No, I don't think so, Clive. I feel rather tired. I think I'll go back. Proof. Have you made up your mind about tomorrow? You still want to leave? Yes.
Yes? Your bath's ready, sir. Thank you. Was the water all right, madam? Quite, thanks. Well, sir, they were over Portsmouth again last night, I hear. I must say we are very lucky. Touch wood. Hot milk, sir? No, thank you. Good morning, Clive. Sorry, I had some shopping to do. Shopping? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a lovely morning. We've some very nice grilled mushrooms this morning, madam, and the last of the Danish bacon. Or perhaps you'd like a nice Dover soap. No, nothing, thanks. I'd just like some coffee. Coffee, yes, madam. I bought this for you. For me? Yes. Open oh, no. Go on. I thought perhaps you'd like it. You look so funny walking down the passage in your little shriveled up beverage coat and those bare legs. I used to have one, you know. I, I left it somewhere. I don't remember. You shouldn't have troubled Prue. Wasn't any trouble. Did you sleep well last night? Yes, very. Did you? Quite, thanks. Telegram, sir. For me? Yes, sir. The bags are down, madam, at the porter's desk. Thank you. More coffee? Yes, please. I told them to bring the bags down. Thanks. I'm terribly sorry about last night. I understand. No, you don't. The fact is, I'm, I nearly ran into my Aunt Harris. Your what? Aunt Harris. It's funny how romantic a thing like this can be when nobody knows about it. And then suddenly how sordid and shabby it all seems when an aunt appears. You mean you're leaving just because of your Aunt Iris? Yes, I suppose so. Anything else, sir? Thanks. Thank you, sir. We've lots of time before the train goes, and it's a lovely morning, Al. Won't you show me that little place you told me about last night? Oh, yes, of course. She'd care to. See the coach and horses. It's lovely. Is it very old? Old, miss? <laughs> My great grandfather was stable boy when Larry Nelson stopped here one night on his way to Parchment. Do you ever see a cart that size? That's 38 pounds. My father took that out of the Aran River on his 82nd birthday, the day before Queen Victoria died. Really? Yes, he did indeed, miss. Hubert. Hubert. Uh, yes, sir. Two places for Mr. Briggs. Uh, yes, sir. How about, how about a nice drop of brown sherry before lunch? Well, don't think we ought to start back, Clive. It's past 12. Oh, there's still plenty of time. It's only five minutes from here to the station. I'd hardly have known you, Mr. Briggs. You look so much better. Seems no time at all since you were here last. What's happened? Why don't you Would you ring up the Grand Hotel and ask him to send our bags around, please? Certainly, sir. Aggie! Aggie! Ring up the Grand Hotel and ask him to send Mr. Briggs his bags around. Right, sir. The middle window table has got to the cheese, sir. They'll be gone in about 15 minutes. Clive, don't you think we'd better go? Don't you worry, miss. We're not going to have Mr. Briggs wait for any 15 minutes. You just come along with me, Aggie. Has number two room been cleaned up yet? Good. This way, please. You came on the right day, Mr. Briggs. A nice Michaelmas goose with applesauce. Fine. Cauliflower, coach and horses style, Chester cheese, and plum tart with junket. And a drop of cream. Cream in what, time? Shh. What's that? Just a lift, miss. Every convenience for our guests. <laughs> it's quite a novelty. Goes from here, right down into the kitchen. This is Cobble. Two goose, Cheshire cheese, and plum tart for two. Uh, well, 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 here we are. Here's something that I hope you haven't forgotten about, Mr. Briggs. Oh, the mull special. Mm. <laughs> the mull special it is, sir. How could I forget about that? Just wait till you try this. There. Well, how is it, miss? 
strong. It's delicious. <laughs> Special to the house, miss. A secret formula dating back to the old smudging days. Well, luncheon immediately. Aggie! Aggie! To Mr. Ramsbottom. To Mr. Ramsbottom. Oh, he's perfect. He might have come straight out of a Dickens story. Yes, that's where he probably found himself. I suppose he's just conforming to the popular opinion of what he ought to be like. We all do that one way or another. What's worrying you, Clive? Me? Nothing. You told me you slept well last night, didn't you? I did? Why? I heard talking in your room and I wondered... Talking? Yes. It was probably the man in the next room. There wasn't any man in the next room. It's all right if you don't want to tell me, but I, I know there's something. There's nothing. Cigarette? Thank you. What's the wire? Secret? No. You can read it if you care to. Wangle, 24 hours leave, coming down for Binge Monty. Who's Monty? Oh, he's a friend of mine. You'll like him. Better than a smack in the lug, wasn't that Monty? Yes, that's Monty. I'll wire him back. We'll meet somewhere else. Will you be going back to Gosley from here? I may, I don't know yet. Here you are, sir. Oh, and um, oh, Mr. Ramsbottom asked me to tell you they're sending your bags around right away. Thank you. Never mind, will it? Oh, well, I think that's everything, sir. If there's anything you want, sir, would you pull this bell? One pull if there's something else you need, and two pulls for when you're finished. All right, thank you. Why didn't we stay here and do that awful grand hotel? Well, this didn't seem quite the place somehow for, for people with five gardens. <laughs> Silly you are. You didn't tell me you'd stayed here before. I didn't stay here. I used to drop in some evenings. Were you working down here or something? No, not exactly. Would the gentleman like his coffee served in the drawing room? Not until we finish this priceless nectar. To the memory of the happiest lunch I've ever had. We've ever had. Oh, I'm beginning to feel awfully happy. So am I. I'm afraid we're going to get to think again. Oh, I like this place. It's good luck to us. We don't quarrel here. It's awfully good of you to give me that dressing gown. There was another one with a velvet collar. Only I didn't think you'd like it as well. I'd like to tell you how grateful I am, but I, I don't quite know how. There's no need to cry. No, I really must. I must tell you what... All the love poems in the world have tried to say and failed. That of all the things on earth, God has made no more exultant, more beautiful, more noble a thing than, than a man and woman who truly love each other and are willing to fight the world for what they believe in. That's what all the poets have tried to say and never have. This must have been wonderful drinks. No proof. I'm afraid it isn't the drinks. I really believe that. About poetry and two people in love. Yes. It's one of the things I really believe. I think it's true. If two people are very, very lucky. Are we very, very lucky? I hope we are. Here's the man with your bag, sir. Sent around from the Grand Hotel, sir. That'll be a shilling to pay, sir. All right, there you are. Thank you. Oh, thank you, sir. Well, let it go. It's, it's nearly one. I suppose we ought to ring for the bill. Oh, yes. What was it the maid told us? One call if we wanted anything else. Two when we'd finished. Well, that's two, then. <laughs> Do you believe in omens? No, I never have. Until now. Neither have I. Come in. You ring, Mr. Briggs? Uh, yes. Is this room to let? It is, sir. The gentleman only moved up this morning. Do you have another one? No, sir. I'm afraid there... Wait a minute, sir. We certainly have. And a very interesting one, too, sir. Well, what do you think of that, sir? They say it's an old smuggler's hiding place. This way, please. Mind the steps, miss. Mind your end, sir. Well, Mr. Briggs, how do you like that? We can have it cleaned up in no time. Oh, it's splendid. Good. I'll send the girl up right away, sir. Thank you. Oh, I should like to live here for the rest of my life. There was a cold blight on that hotel. I'm glad we started badly. Now we can start again. It's like, like having two holidays instead of one.
Come with me. You don't want to die here. Sometimes when I'm not very well. Is there anything I can do? No, 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 no. It's sometimes when I'm overtired, I talk in my sleep. I'm sorry I woke you. Would you like me to stay until you're asleep? No, 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 no. I'm all right, really. It's nothing. I'd say there were about half a dozen flying quite low. You learned that in France. Please, Prue. What was it like, Clive? You won't be satisfied till I tell you, will you? Well, it was hell. Dirty, foul, disgusting. Do you want any more? No, not if you feel like that. Well, how'd you expect me to feel? Proud. Proud? I'm proud because you were there. But you said you were out of it now. What's that? Shrapnel. Some of our own. Every shell bursts into a thousand pieces, and every piece comes down again by the laws of gravitation. Come here. I'm afraid I, I'm not very brave. You are brave. You're very, very beautiful. Funny. Suppose a bomb dropped. Suppose I were killed and they found me here in this room with a strange man. I shouldn't let you down. I'd go into your room. Suppose you were killed, both of us, just as we are now. Then we'd both be dead and we wouldn't care a hang. It's a bomb. The closer it is, the safer we'll be from now on. It's a million to one against two bombs landing in the same spot. It was worse than this at Dunkirk, wasn't it? No. It was a hundred times worse. Clive. Yes? I'm so glad you were there. Is that all you're glad about? No, it's just one thing I didn't quite understand. Quite a remarkable thing, sir. One of those little phenomenons in nature. It certainly is, but did it do any damage? Direct hit on the old skate rig, sir. But as the town council, we're going to put it down this winter anyhow. The look waffer saved the taxpayers a hundred pounds. All right, sir, take it away. These eggs ought to taste fine, sir, after what's just happened. Out of evil cometh good. <laughs> you better be careful of these eggs. They're very special. Oh, what's excited Mr. Ramsbottom? The air raid. He tells me he has 12 chickens. And every one of them laid an egg when the bomb went off. Come in. There's a gentleman here to see you. That's the first time I've been called a gentleman since I joined the army. What cheer to the old cock robin? Monty. Oh, sorry, Nipper. They never told me you had company. Come along in. We didn't expect you down quite so early. Uh, this is Prudence Cathaway, my friend Monty. Pleased to meet you, miss. Good morning. Uh, won't you sit down, mister? Uh, you might just as well call me Monty, miss. Everybody else does. A little bit of all right, this. Would you care to have something? Uh, no, thanks, miss. You see, I had my lunch around one. Well, uh, you'll be wanting to get dressed, Prue. Don't you mind me, miss? Look, Monty, as a matter of fact, 
This is her room. Oh, sorry, miss. My mistake. Come along. See where I sleep. Oh. You have a nice trip down? Aye, I'll say I did. There were two Marines on the train and a commercial traveler. Mind your head. <laughs> we got the civvy in the poker and squeezed him every part. I made enough to pay for the whole trip down and back. Hey, you got any ghosts in here? Now, this is where the old smugglers used to hide. Sit down. I'll bet you got beetles, though. Beetles? There's always beetles under these old roofs. Sorry, Nipper. I put my foot right in at that time. Did you bring her down with you, or did you find her here? She came with me, of course. Aye. I might have guessed that. Accidents like that don't happen so neat. She's a nice girl. Oh, she's a nice girl, sure. Well, she is. Well, I said so, didn't I? Oh, come off at Nipper. I wasn't no born yesterday, no more you. You don't have to make excuses. How long did you leave, Monty? 24 hours. Take the first train up in the morning. We'll have to have a talk, Nipper. All right. How much does she know? Look, Monty, you said you'd come down here for a binge. Well, I had to say something, didn't I? All right. We'll have our binge. Come on, have a drink. Okay. Yes. Can we come through? Come on. We'll be at the bar, crew. Would Mr. Montague care to have lunch with us, Clive? Of course. On one condition, little lady. Dinner tonight on yours truly. Lovely. Well, she did not think so much of me, does she? She will. If you stop thinking she's what you're thinking. Okay, Nipper, I'll treat her as if she were a bloomin' society David Hawley. Then you'll be treating her for exactly what she is. And I'll get the drinks. What do you have, Pro? Gin and French. Pint of the old mile for me, Nipper. Right. Come on, little lady. We'll dance across. Love to. Some of the boys of the East can fuse the leaves. How'd you do, miss? Not bad, eh? Not bad, eh? <laughs> Don't you think we want to make sure that table over there? Aye, miss. I'll see you later, boys. Don't you worry about that, Monty. Oh, we're with there, all right. Oh, that's a bit of all right, ain't it? That's a bit of all right. There's something I've been wanting to tell you, miss. Yes? Sorry I crashed into your room this morning. Now, if I'd known you were there, I wouldn't have gone in with so much of a bang. Oh, that's all right. Well, it's tough on a girl when she's got to meet her chap's friends. But don't you worry. Why don't you judge him on me? He's class and he's educated. He may not flee it in your face, but he's a real gent. He thinks a lot of you too, Monty. Well, that's because we're in the same crowd. When you work with a bloke, eat, sleep and drink with him for months on end, you either want to shoot him or die for him. Were you in France together? I'll say we were. Was he... Was he a good soldier? Was he a good soldier? Let me tell you something. I've been through two wars and I've seen every sort of man in every sort of trouble. And you can take it from me, miss. The nipper is great. If you could have seen him coming down the road to Malice with them ration bags slung over his back. Walking into hell and cool as a cucumber and coming back the very next night and doing it again. Uh, he wouldn't have to ask me as a good soldier. Well, I'll tell you something else. He's up for a medal. Yeah? Aye. DCM for carrying his wounded company officer in the last two miles to Dunkirk. And then giving up his own place in the boat to help the wounded. If they ask me, I'd make it the VC. Tell me about it. Well, it was after the Belgians had thrown up the sponge. Look, here's the street in Douai where we were fighting a real guard action to let the main army through. Old Douai to the last man, that was our orders. Well, we got to here when the jury opened fire. Here. Hi. When you two finally win this war, call me. I'll be at the bar. Marty was just telling me about the medal. What medal? <laughs> he hasn't heard. You're up for a medal, Annie. You're a bloomin' hero. What are you talking about? In fact, I had it first time from the sergeant major. Deputation from the East Kent Fusiliers. Now, what's your trouble? Well, we tossed up odd men out for the privilege of asking your young lady for a dance, and I was the lucky one. Well, I'm not the lucky one at this table. You're talking to the wrong bloke. Oh, that's all right. Do you mind, Clyde? No, go ahead. Oh, thanks. That's very nice. Well, have drinks on me, chaps. She's a nice enough girl. Why don't you keep your mouth shut, Marty? 
You promised me, didn't you? All right, all right. I didn't start it. She asked me. Asked you what? Good deal, isn't it? Yeah, it's all right. Look here, Nipper. I hate talking the way I've got to, but time's getting short, and this may be our last chance, so we might just as well face it. Absence without leave, that's one thing. But desertion, that's another. You were given a month's sick leave on the 10th of July. Today is the 15th of September. Now, look, Nipper, we've been pals for a long time. You might just as well save your breath, Marty. I'm not going back. Oh, listen to me, Nipper. She's a decent enough girl, She's but... got nothing to do with it. Nothing. I made up my mind a long time before I met her. Well, if it isn't her, it doesn't make any sense. You must be crazy. Hey, Marty! She dances all right, don't she? Now, how are you, Lenny? Let's talk sense, Nipper. We've all felt the way you do one time or another. Get so sick and tired, we want to clear out and never come back. Even if they shoot us. But when the time comes, we always go back. You don't understand, Monty. It's bigger than what you're talking about. It's bigger than me. It's just something that's deep down inside me. Oh, it's got nothing to do with being afraid or sleeping in the mud or going without food. It, it doesn't bear talking about it. It's just there, and nothing can ever change it. Look, Nipper, you can't get away with it. It's getting tougher every day, with the military police stopping everyone on the road for his papers. Shoot us, I'm sitting here. They'll pick you up. The pleasure's all mine, miss. See you later, gents. Bye, Larry. What were you saying, Monty? Who pick who up? Oh, uh, those motorists on the road. If a man's in uniform, they always pick him up and give him a lift. Yes, the war has made people more generous, has it? Will you dance with me, Clyde? Yes, of course. Marty, don't worry about me. You know I can't sing. Ladies and gentlemen, he says he can't sing. I've known the man for two years and he can sing. We sang this song together before every rank in the army, from field marshal to sanitary squad. Is that the truth, Nipper, or is it not? Oh, go on, Marty, get along with it. If you can sing it for all of them, can't you sing it for me, Clive? All right. Hi, that's better. Now then, all together. Old soldiers never die, never die. Please. No more, not tonight, Cat. No more, not tonight. You're all the same. The reforming urge. You go halfway and then you start to preach. Give me another one. Uh, yes? Come on, miss. Let's see if you can sing as well as you can dance. That it. Off we go.
<laughs> well, good night, Miss Blue. Thank you for them dances. Good night, Marty, and thank you for a lovely evening. Well, Marty, I... Oh, uh, do you mind, Miss Blue? I'd like to have a word with Clive before I go. Of course. There's just one thing I want to say to you. I hate to come back to it again, Nibble. You know how the captain feels about you. When he first heard you were overstaying your leave, he thought you were sick and couldn't write. Even after they'd been weeks trying to find you, he was still hoping it was something you couldn't help. It was very noble of the captain to be troubled about this. Yeah, well, one night he sent for me to come to his room. Marty, he said he's your pal. See if you can find him and get him here before it's too late. If he's not here by midnight Monday, he'll be posted as a deserter. And then after that, there's nothing we can do. He's too good a man to have his life ruined. Now, those are the captain's very words. Too good a man to have his life ruined. That's why I want you to come back with me, Nipper. Marty, I'm sorry. I've tried to explain. There's nothing more to say. What are you going to do? I don't know. Good night. Is that you, Clive? Yes, it's me. The unfailing Mr. Ramsbottom. Barley water. Have some? No, thanks. Help me, will you? Yes, of course. Monty looked so worried when you said goodbye to him. All evening you both seemed so mysterious and strange. Please, Prue. No, really. When I was dancing, I saw you two leaning across the table, whispering together like a couple of conspirators. Have you two got some horrible secret? Did you rob the church box when you were little boys? Or has one of you a wife and six babies hidden away somewhere? Come on. What is it? Well, it was about a... A friend of Monty's who joined the army the day the war began. Because he believed that he was going to fight for something that really mattered. He was ready to fight and willing to die if there was any sense and reason to it. But he didn't find any. He found his leaders stupid, complacent and out of date. With no claim to leadership but birth and class and privilege. They weren't leading him in a struggle for a better England. They were leading him in a struggle to preserve the same rotten, worn out conditions that kept their class in comfort and his in poverty. They were asking him to give his life for something that he hated and despised. Is Monty expected to answer this man's problem? Monty had nothing to offer in reply. You might ask him whether it's time to doubt and argue when his country's fighting for its life. No one believes that England's perfect. We all know we were badly guided and unprepared, but what's the use of whining about the past when we're fighting to survive? What we're fighting for is bigger than he is. Bigger than his leaders, bigger than you, Clive, or me. If we lose our faith, what's the alternative? To be beaten in this war would, would be terrible, unthinkable. That's what he's trying to see clearly through this awful confusion. He keeps asking himself, if England were to lose, could we be worse off or weaker or more shameful? But doesn't he understand that right or wrong, it's too late to doubt or question? We're in it now and we've got to go on. Monty should tell his friend there are bigger things to fight for than his conscience. He's told him that. He's told him that he must fight for England. Do you know what England means to this man? It means poverty, hunger, begging for work, no matter how cruel and humiliating. And if our armies did win this war, what share will this man have in the England that he's helped to save? They'll give him nothing. It'll return to the men who have owned it and disgraced it, so that they can go on disgracing it until the next war comes. I don't think that will happen. I hope it won't. But whatever does happen, let us decide it, not the enemy. But you've only told me the things this man's brain tells him he shouldn't fight for. What about all the things his heart tells him he should fight for? What things? He must ask his heart. He doesn't think with his heart. Go ahead. Tell me just a few. All right. I'll, I'll try. If anyone asks me what England is, he... He robs me of an answer because everything it is can't be spoken about. If you do, it's like tearing apart a flower to analyze it. If I said it was Shakespeare and thatched roofs in the countryside, he'd laugh. If I said it was speakers in Hyde Park free to say what they wish and polite bobbies at the corners of those cliffs over there and Drake alive in memory, he'd laugh again. If I said England was the new forest, deep in ferns and holly trees, 
If I said it was May blossoms rich in spring and bluebells like a godsend carpet and the rain and the shine and the green of our blessed land. If I said it was the larks that will sing here tomorrow, high in the sun tomorrow and forever. Or the shout of a newsboy at the corner, the sound of a taxi horn, or the ancient dignity of our cities. If I said it was all those things, he'd laugh because words have said it so often before. If I tried to say it was all the things that make the pride and joy and gentle gladness of our people. I'd use words badly and shame the things themselves by doing so. I couldn't tell him if he won't see beyond the emptiness of words. But I could make him see. England, it's... It's Monty and the boys coming up the road from Douai. It's you, Carl, helping the weaker men into the boats instead of getting in themselves. Whatever this man is, blood and bone, mind and heart and spirit, England made him. Every part of him. Even if he doesn't understand the other things, he would understand that. When he says the word England, it must be for him as it is for me, like music that's rich beyond the bar of music. Those are the things. And he must go back and fight for them, because that's England too. Knowing that we'll never be beaten. Knowing that we won't give in, we won't, we just won't. Sorry, Clive, it's just something I feel so terribly strongly about. anything from Briggs? Sorry, sir. But I'm still hoping. Thank you, Corporal. Yes, go ahead. It's up to you now. Yes. All right. Thank you. Take this down, will you? Five Briggs. Two, two, six, five, six, seven. the wind up, all these parachuting spy scares. You better get your card out. Where are you for, mate? Gilfay. Identity cards, please. Hey, who was that? Hey, where are you going? Hey, come back here. Corporal! Corporal the guard! Turn out the guard this way! Who was that? Well, don't ask me. I picked him up on the road. Spoke quite decent English, too. Come on this way, over here. Now 
what's this? Hey, you, wake up. What are you doing here? I'm talking to you. What are you doing here? I was just sleeping here. I'm on a walking trip. Where's your haversack? You go on a walking trip without a haversack, can't you? No, you don't. There's a spy scare around here. We got it from the soldiers last night. You better come along and explain yourself. Don't be silly. Here, you. What are you going to do here? <laughs> to trouble you. I've had a slight accident. I don't think it's much, but it doesn't seem to stop bleeding. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to bind it up for me. All right, come in. Thank you. Silly, I had a fall from my motorbike. Tire burst. Sit down. I'll be with you in a minute. Thank you. have it stitched. They'd have done it much better at the hospital. Yes, I know, but I hadn't time to find the hospital. I'm in rather a hurry. Would you say he'd left your motorcycle? At a garage. They're putting it right. On the Midhurst Road? Yes. This is going to hurt a little. Mom! Mom! Did you see him go by, Mom? I see who go by. The police. There's been a fight, Mom. A spy. Who told you that? They telephoned from Dunstan, and Mr. Robinson told the teacher. They found a spy in Mr. Bristow's barn. They had an awful fight, and he got away. Go and get your lunch, Jackie. Oh, yes, Mom. You, um, hadn't time to find the hospital? No. It's on the Midhurst Road, half a mile from here. You must have gone right past it. You couldn't have missed it. Yes, but, but I... Uh... I'm sorry. I'll have to telephone the police. I know what you're thinking. But will you believe me when I tell you that I'm not a spy? Honestly, I'm not. I was sleeping in a barn and a man tried to stop me from leaving and I had to fight him, that's all. Will you give me just ten minutes? Then you can do whatever you like. You must have this dressed again. It really needs a stitch. Will you give me ten minutes? There. Yeah. Best I can do. Now you better go. I uh, wish I could thank you. I've used your bandages and everything. It's all right. It's my duty. And it's your duty to tell the police? Yes. Well, goodbye and thank you again. Bye. Number seven, first floor. How much? Ten. One night, please. Oh, no. Identity card, please. Yeah. Bed number ten, first floor. I know. Bed for one night, please, and bath. Identity card, please. I'm afraid I lost it. You know the law. Have you reported it to the police? Yes, but I haven't got my new one yet. Well, they must have given you something. Never mind. No trouble. Maybe they haven't uniforms, but they have got the spirit. Look, there's Harry Gates, the poacher, marching with Sir George. Ah, poachers is the men for the own guard, sir. They know this country, every inch of it. Well, I must be getting along, sir. How's business these days, Sergeant? Not so good, sir, not so good. 
They tell me there's a lot of them German spies come over with our chaps from Dunkirk, disguised as Tommies. We got word of a young fellow acting peculiar around Midhurst yesterday. But there, all they had against him was a wounded Anne. Goodbye, sir. Don't forget the police concert Saturday. I'll be there. It's all right. I'm not a German spy. You can search me for weapons if you like. What are you doing here? Hiding. You look tired. I'm just going to have my tea. Would you care to join me? Thanks. Don't walk in the graves, please. Beautiful. Norman, isn't it? Really old. Yes, it's quite old. The western transepts, Norman, the nave and the tower are 13th century. Excuse me. They say the villagers themselves built it in their evenings after work. They must have believed in those days. Really and truly believed. No one has that kind of faith today. Are you sure? Perhaps you're only speaking for yourself. If you're not a spy, may I ask what you're hiding from? I'm a deserter. This is the way to the rectory. Do you like it strong? Yes, please. You know, it's a funny thing, but I never thought I'd place such priceless value on four walls of fire and a cup of tea. Is that all you really need? No, I think most of all I need peace of mind. Would you be good enough? Over in that cupboard, you'll find the cake jar. Over there. There's some cherry there, if you prefer it. No, thanks. You must forgive me if I'm rather conventional, but did you ever try to pray? Some people get quite a lot of help from it, you know. I've prayed all right. When you're in a jam, you pray. Even chaps like me. At Dunkirk, I prayed to God and the Pope and Buddha and Muhammad, every one of them. I was too tired to pray later on, but while I could, I prayed to them all. No sense in taking any chances when it doesn't cost you any more, is there? Sugar? No, thank you. Try one of these homemade cakes. No, I don't think I could eat. That's because you're tired. Best a while and try again. Where do you intend to go? Where do I intend to go? I wish I knew. Of course, I suppose I could stay here and cry sanctuary. Then you'd bar the door and no one could take me away. Isn't that the ancient rite of your church? We've no physical sanctuary any longer. But we do help some people to find a greater one. A spiritual sanctuary. Peace of mind, you called it just now. I'm sorry I was rude. Doesn't matter. I see you as a symbol of our age. An age of reason that's driven out the age of faith. How can you have faith in a thing when your reason tells you that you can't believe it? Reason deals with the things we know. There are a lot of things we don't know. Faith is useful when reason can't go any further. Faith is simply the quality of believing beyond reason. Isn't that perhaps what troubles you? You're not running away because you're a coward. All the reason in you calls out against going back to fight in a war that seems warped and ill-defined. But the faith in you says you must fight so that England shall not go down. It's a girl who said that. Beautiful girl who believed that. Your mind and your soul deadlocked in a struggle. Your body the battleground. Yes, it's simple, isn't it? You get so tired, so exhausted. Time comes when you just can't go on running anymore. I'm tired of being a hare to their hounds. I loathe being chased and I hate myself for hiding every time I see a uniform. Maybe you're right. I mean, partly right. Perhaps I should give myself up. Tell them what I've told you. As much as they'll listen to. It's their responsibility. Let them decide. I wouldn't make any hasty decisions if I were you. You may regret it. No. A man must have integrity. He's not entitled to free thought unless he's ready to pay the price of admitting it. If I dare not admit what I believe, then I have no right to believe it. You may stay here tonight if you wish. 
I have a choir practice at seven. But... No, I... I'll go. And thank you. You've helped me a lot. At least I know what I'm going to do now. Do you feel strong enough? Yes. Whatever you do, don't think anymore. Trust your feelings, not your reason. If you do that, I believe your problem may soon be over. Thank you again. Goodbye. We can't bring anyone to the telephone for personal calls. But this is very important. I'm talking long distance. I said we can't bring anyone to the phone for personal calls. Then will you write this down, please? Mr. Clive Briggs wants Miss Cathaway to call him back at Merton 734. Yes, that's right. I'll be waiting right here. Thank you. Finished? Not quite. They're going to call me back. Do you mind if I wait here? No, no, that's all right. Well, that's probably for me. Hello? Yes, I'm calling Gosley. What? Oh, one and six. Thank you. I owe you one and six. Well, that's all right. Pay me when you leave. Is that you, Clive? What's happened? Are you ill? No, 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 no. It's just... Darling, what are you doing? Where are you? Near London. Oh, Prue, I must see you. No, no, I, I didn't write before because... Well, because I couldn't. But now... No, 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 it wasn't that. It's because I'm going to give myself up. Clive, don't do anything. Don't do anything until I see you. Promise. Of course. Prue, do you think you can come here? We'll get married. Can you get away, get leave? Of course I can, darling. Don't give yourself up. Don't do anything until I see you. I promise, darling. After all, if I gave myself up now, heaven knows when we'd see each other again. Oh, Prue, you're so beautiful, and I love you so very much. You do believe me, don't you? I believe you because... because you've never said you loved me before. Dearest, I didn't know, but I do now. It's suddenly so clear, and... But you do want to marry me, don't you? <laughs> no, I do, darling. What time can you be here? I can catch a train about seven. I'll, I'll be in London a little after nine. I'll be waiting at Charing Cross Station under the big clock. Well, you better go now. You don't want to miss your train. No, no, no. There's plenty of time. Please talk to me. And the girl's been proposed to. She's got to talk to somebody about it. You're the only one. Oh, I love you so. Well, there aren't many girls that have been proposed to by telephone. And there are probably hundreds of people listening in. Until tonight? A little after nine? At Charing Cross. Under the big clock. Bless you. Here's your one and sixpence. Could you tell me, is there an underground nearby? Down the street, round the corner, take you right to Leicester Square. Thank you. Uh, one moment, please. Can I see your identity card? you go from Leaford? I'm, I'm not sure. I traveled at night. I don't know the places. Sergeant, would you believe me when I tell you that I was coming to give myself up? I swear it to you. But I wanted just one evening. This evening. Then you slipped off a lorry at the military barrier outside Midhurst. Yes. Can I see the officer in charge? It's terribly important. See the officer in charge when the time comes. I've got to see him now. Please let me see him. If only I could make you understand. I beg of you. Parker? Yes, sir. I'll be back in a minute.
All right. Come with me. Here he is, sir. Yes? May I speak to you alone, sir? All right, Sergeant. The calling from your home, sir. Hello? Oh, is that you, Thomas? Tell Lady Helen I'll pick her up at carriages at 9 o'clock. No, no. Put out my full dress uniform. Tell Robert to have the car here in half an hour, will you? You wanted to speak to me, I believe. If I may, sir. Well? I hardly know how to begin. I want to ask you a favor, sir, and I know I have no right to ask it. I had an appointment to meet someone this evening. And I want you to believe me when I tell you, sir, that it means more to me than I can possibly explain. What are you here for? Desertion, sir. I see. According to your deposition, you had already made up your mind to surrender. That's true, sir. Immediately after I'd kept my appointment. You volunteered on the first day of war, I see. Yes, sir. Arras, Dunkirk, twice mentioned in dispatches. Recommended for Distinguished Conduct Medal. I don't quite understand. Why did you desert? I tried my best to fight for my country, but I... I found there are too many people in my way. I'm ready to accept whatever consequences there may be, but... Will you trust me, sir? I give you my word of honor that I shall be back here within two hours. Sergeant, I'm giving this man leave. Leave until uh, 12 o'clock. Captain Marshall will be on duty then. Will you tell him it's my personal responsibility? Very good, sir. Thank you, sir.
What train are you waiting for, miss? Oh, I... I seem to have missed someone. Mm. Yes, I've missed them. My father. And yes, he came from the hospital right after the air raid. Why, Prue, this is a surprise. Hello, father. What is it? Something wrong? Oh, I, I just wanted to see you. You know, Prue, people come from all over the place to sit in that chair. Sometimes it's surgery. Most of the time, there's nothing wrong. You just talk. What would be the use of me if I couldn't help my own daughter? <laughs> it's funny. I always think of you as a kid in pigtails. Father? Yes? On my first leave, when I didn't come home, I went away with the soldier. We stayed on the coast. No, please don't say anything, Father. I know it was wrong, but we did nothing to be ashamed of. And then last night, he telephoned me to come to London to marry him. But he wasn't at the station. I looked around and I waited. Then I came here, that's all. Well, that's a simple story. He just changed his mind, I suppose. No, there must have been another reason. You see, he'd overstayed his leave and he might have been arrested or something may have happened to him in the raid. He'd been through terrible times at Dunkirk and his mind was confused. He needs someone so much to help him. I've got to find him, Father. Can't you help me? I'll do my best. Colin. Yes, Doctor. I want you to call military police headquarters and the casualty clearing station. Ask if there's someone there by the name of... Briggs. Clive Briggs. Thanks, Miss Collins. I'd like some tea? Who is he? That is, if you care to tell me. He's just a soldier. Private. The moment I met him, I knew... That why is it like that, Father? We weren't in love then. What makes it like that? The wisest of us don't know that, Prue. It's so many things. It's how old you are and how the moon is. And what tune the orchestra played and left ringing in your head. Everything you've ever done or thought in all your life somehow makes a tributary stream that pours into that one moment. Excuse me, sir. St. John's Hospital on the telephone. Well, thank you. Yes? Dr. Cathaway speaking. Oh, hello, Ferris. Yes, that's the name. Oh, I see. Yes, it is. I appreciate that. I'll come at once. Goodbye. He's been wounded in the head by some falling debris. They're going to operate in half an hour. Ferris is a very good friend of mine. Do you want to come? It's not an easy case. Bad fracture on the left side. There may be danger of hemorrhage. You have to expect great intracranial pressure. Yes. I want you to meet my daughter. Uh, Prudence. This is Dr. Matthias. Uh, good evening. Dr. Ferris. How do you do? We're ready, Doctor. Thank you, nurse. Excuse me. Uh, nurse, will you look after my daughter, please? I should be glad to, Doctor. We shall be some time, I think. Have some coffee. The nurse will take care of you. Father. Yes? Father, I... I don't know how to say it, but please, please do everything you can. Oh, thank you. How long does it usually take? Well, it's difficult to say, Miss Gathaway. Sometimes half an hour, sometimes it goes on for hours. My dear, in cases of this kind, there's no way of telling. Could I see him now? No. He mustn't be disturbed till the morning. Now come home and get some sleep. Father. Yes? Are you very tired? No. Could we go somewhere? I, I couldn't possibly go home. Why, of course. Hmm? 
I'll have some cold chicken, please, and a bottle of the Saint Julien. Are you sure you won't have something proof? Nothing, thank you. A glass of wine, please. Very well, Mary. Would you like to dance? Well, I'm quite good. Yes, I know you are. Hello, Dr. Cassidy. Oh, hello. Hello there. I bet people are saying, look at that old codger with the beautiful girl. Must be his money that does it. What's going to happen? Tomorrow morning, to this morning now. You'll see much better. That'll be the relief of the pressure on the brain. You'll be quite rational and quite relieved. And then? In the afternoon, we should expect certain signals. Rising temperature, moments of irrationality. There's no more I can say as yet. No more anyone can say. In a little while. Thirsty. Doctor will be here in a few minutes. We'll see what he has to say. Thirsty. seem to have had a grudge against you. Thank you, nurse. It's all right. Dr. Cathoy, has Prue told you that I want to marry her? I, Prudence, take thee, Clive, to my wedded husband. I, Prudence, take thee, Clive, to my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward to have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. In sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. With this ring I thee wed, and with all my worldly goods I thee endow. With all my worldly goods I thee endow. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Padre. Well, it, it's the best man's privilege to kiss the bride. Didn't have time to think of a decent present there, but... I'll get you something permanent when I have a chance. Here. Be sure you don't set fire to himself. Well, so long, Nipper. All the boys send the regards, and the captain says get better quick, because he'll be wanting you. Oh, here. Here's something he wanted me to give you. He always did say you were a highbrow. What is it, Prue? Shakespeare. Thanks, Molly. And the captain, I... So long. Drop in again tomorrow. Bye. So long, Prue. Goodbye, Monty. Mrs. Briggs must go now. Mrs. Briggs. This above all, to thine own self be true. And it must follow as the night the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. Farewell. My blessing season this in thee. Yes, above all, to thine own self be true. How is he? I think he's a little better. Is that you, Prue? Yes, darling. You look much better. 
I am better. I feel clear-headed. Better than I have for a long time. Good. They don't leave us alone, do they? I'm not afraid. I feel safe when I'm with you. Remember, the nearer the bombs drop, the safer we'll be from then on. Thirsty? best for you to come away. We should be watching. I'd rather stay if you don't mind. Mm. Yes, darling. Your cap. Take it off. Of course. There. Is that better? Yes. Everything's all right. They're miles away. You tell me when they're close, won't you? Yes. I'll tell you. Why don't you go and get some rest? No, I stayed this long. I want to stay now. You can't help him by staying here. It would be just the same if he went down to the shelter. You can't let anyone die alone, even if they don't know. Why are you giving up so easily? I told you there's still a chance, and I mean it, honestly. There's nothing we can do now but wait. Please let me stay. I brought you some tea. Try to eat a little. There's some food in the nurse's room. Those who can't be taken downstairs, we've orders to move them under the bay to protect them from falling debris. No, no. Please don't humiliate him like that. for what I believe in. But first, we've, we've got to fight for what you believe in. You were right. We've got to win this war. We've got to. We will. Just above all, to thine own self be true. Mm -hmm. 